The Black Rock Gotham Classic from the world's most famous arena, Ohio State and Hawaii, Notre Dame and Blue, Dan Schulman, Dan Dockage, Jeff Goodman, happy holidays, glad you're with us. As we get ready for basketball here, the unbeaten and third-ranked Buckeyes, Dan, taking on a Notre Dame team that's already lost three times this season. They have, but this is two of the smartest teams in college basketball. The guard play is outstanding on these teams. The coaching is great. This is a terrific, terrific matchup. Notre Dame 8 and 3 on the season. Ohio State 11 and 0, one of the best defensive teams in the country. The Irish, as is often the case, they can really shoot it. And when they shoot well, they win games. When they knock down threes, they win. There's no question, but Garrick Sherman also inside yeah. was terrific against Indiana. He has ten, uh, eight straight double figure scoring efforts, a fifth year senior. It's going to be interesting. Amir Williams for Ohio State has kind of come into his own this year. Averaging 10 points a game is a pretty good matchup inside as well as great guards. And we'd like to welcome everybody who saw that. A game go right down to the wire as Illinois defeats Missouri. In the Bragg and Rice game, one of the best games around this time of year, every year in St. Louis, a 65 64 win for Illinois. Here in New York, Dan Schulman, Dan Dockage, Jeff Goodman, Ohio State unbeaten and ranked third in the country, and Notre Dame as we are underway with the Buckeyes designated as the home team and wearing white. And this is Aaron Kraft, phenomenal defensive player, now a senior. Amir Williams throws up a wild shot. And Pat Connaughton, who's a 6'5 guard, but really plays the four spot, averaging about seven rebounds per game. Now an Irish turnover, something they don't do very often. Scott hits the trailer, Williams, and the Buckeyes are on the board. Well, Shannon Scott inserted in the lineup. Sam Thompson last year was a starter. He's now the sixth man. And the combination of Tom, or excuse me, of Scott, Kraft, and Lenzel Smith Jr., in my opinion, is the best perimeter defensive team in the country. Eric Sherman, the big man, the transfer from Michigan State, having a good season for the Irish, and he's had very good games in his two games against Big Ten teams this year. Got a good look, but he missed the left-handed lay -in. And that's what Notre Dame likes to do. No, Notre Dame likes to bring everybody up and isolate Sherman on the on the baseline, and Sherman's got to deliver in this game, Dan. Let's take a look at the uh, five on the floor for each team, brought to you by Black Rockets. A very two very experienced teams, really. With Notre Dame starting three seniors at Atkins, Grant, and Sherman. Uh, Grant really a fourth-year junior athletically, and Thad Mata's got two seniors and three juniors in his starting lineup. And the Irish turn it over again. Boy, they take good care of the basketball, but they've popped it up twice already. Well, they're the best in the country, assist to turnovers. And uh, they've put the ball in bad spots two times. You know, Dan, the ball looks like it's overinflated to me a little bit. Bouncing a little too high? Yeah, really? it sounds odd, but we saw it uh, a year or two ago at Illinois. Shannon Scott for three, a little bit strong, and Connaughton with another rebound. Well, you mentioned that Connaughton plays a four, and with Sherman out there, he jumps center. And he didn't win tonight, but he's won four of them. He's 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he's jump center and won four tips already this year. This is Jaron Grant, averaging better than 19 points and six assists per game. The Irish swing it around. Sherman slips inside and lays it in. How about that footwork? I tell you, he's really good going to his right shoulder. Uh, Ohio State is going to have to make a decision here what they're going to do with him because too easy, two straight times down the floor. Are they going to double? Are they not going to double? That's a big decision for Thad Mott in this game. And Mike Bray told us at shoot around he would mix defenses, and he already has two minutes into the game. He's gone to a 2 3 zone. Mike Brain, his 14th year as the head coach at Notre Dame, been to one Sweet 16, been to nine NCAA tournaments, and now he gets to coach in the ACC as of this year. It's comfortable for him, though, being from yes. Jamatha. A lot of kids going to the ACC. He's in, he recruits that area tough. Coach to Duke, and there's Thad Mata, who's had just a tremendous run at Ohio State, including one a trip to the national championship game, another trip to the Final Four, and a lot of people certainly thinking, although there's maybe no there's no 20 point a game guy but this they're talented they're deep they're athletic they're great defensively and this could be a special season for the Buckeyes. And, and they're really tough like mentally tough last year the threesome of Scott Smith and Kraft came into Assembly Hall and dominated Indiana on a night a senior night where Indiana was trying to clinch the Big Ten title they went in front of 17,000 people and whipped everybody.
By the way, Aaron Kraft starts on the freshman, Demetrius Jackson, who gets the three from the corner. And the McDonald's All-American misses that. And back come the Buckeyes, led by Scott. And a travel is the call on LaQuinton Ross. Hey, that was great defense, not good defense by Grant. Grant got back, put his head under the rim, ball was thrown to Ross, and he followed the scouting report. He knew Ross was going to spin in transition, got in front of him, forced a travel. What's the one biggest key for Notre Dame to have a chance to win this shoot game? Shoot the basketball. They have to be able to shoot the basketball from him right there. Connaughton has to shoot the basketball, and Atkins has to shoot it. They have to shoot the ball well to win this game. They are a good three-point shooting team, almost 40% as a group on the season. Here's Ross trying to take advantage of the size advantage he's got. Dishes it off, and Amir Williams with the emphatic finish. You know, that was not that easy for Ross. Ross dribbled back the man down, forced a double, and kids throw a bounce pass in traffic. Hands are up, ball down, it's a bucket. Sherman triple team, the Irish keep the ball. Ross started very slowly this season, but man, has he come on. Yeah, five straight threes against Maryland, and... You know, what's this? A little help comes. You see Sherman, his hands were at his shoulders, and Ross, that's his basketball instinct. Throws a bounce pass instead of an air pass, and it's a bucket. Grant to an open Connaughton. Short on the three, and it will stay with the Notre Dame. Connaughton thanking Grant for the good look. He just couldn't knock it down. You know, there is a maturity to this Notre Dame team that you just like, and Connaughton and Grant and Atkins and Sherman, you know, you said it. He thanked it. Like, hey, I'm going to make it next time. I cost you an assist. Sherman inside, and this time he finishes. Can't do that. Cannot give him an angle. You can defend Garrett Sherman if you stay between him and the bucket. It's like things you learn in fifth grade. But if you don't stay between him and the bucket, he's terrific with either hand. Lenzel Smith Jr., and a foul is called on Jared Grant. That'll be his first. Grant and Atkins, both guys for the Irish, play 36, 37 minutes a game. Mike Bray can ill afford to have one of those two guards get in foul trouble. No, and they're very smart. He'll know, Atkins will, and as will Grant, how to play with a foul. And I would bet in a game like this, if he picks up another one, they may sit him for a little bit, but not the rest of the half. You know, a senior or a guy in his third, fourth year in college should know how to play with two fouls. Tom Knight into the game. The Irish go bigger as Jackson goes to the bench, and Notre Dame still in the 2-3 zone, and we might have a, a game clock or shot clock situation as Pat Driscoll, one of the officials, heads over to the scorer's table. Pat Driscoll, Donnie Epley, Larry Scarato working the game. It's a terrific crew. Really good. You know, Notre Dame's in a zone. Notre Dame is very vulnerable in the middle of the zone because Garrick Sherman really sits in the lane under the basket. So Ross or Smith will be called upon to exploit the middle of the zone. When we come back to different, look at the middle area of that zone. It is wide open. Play. Ross is in the middle of that zone right now, setting a screen. Kraft short on the jumper. Still loose. Notre Dame ball. First media timeout of the night here in New York with Ohio State up by a point on the Irish. Oops. Presented by K Jewelers. Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. We're just underway here at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Happy holidays to you and yours, Ohio State and Notre Dame, with the Buckeyes leading by one. And hi, everybody. Big day of hoops so far, and there's more to come tonight and even later on tonight here on ESPN2. Dan Schulman, Dan Dockich. Let's take a look at the one-on-one. -on -one. Now take us a little bit deeper inside this game. Well, these are two smart teams, and they're led by their guards. Both guard tandems, both guard threesomes actually don't turn the ball over. You see what Grant and Atkins have done. I mean, that's just phenomenal. And on the other end, the defense of Ohio State, particularly on the perimeter, is fantastic. Smith, Shannon Scott, and, of course, Aaron Cramp, as good as it gets in college basketball. The numbers bear it out. 
Aaron Kraft and the Buckeyes are unbeaten. They're 11 and 0. They're ranked third in the country. They have wins over the likes of Maryland, Marquette, Wyoming. Right now, the Irish are eight and three, and most surprisingly, they've lost twice at home. Once to Indiana State, once to North Dakota State. They also lost a wild shootout at Iowa, 98 to 93. They're coming off a win a week ago over Indiana that has lifted their spirits a little bit. Yeah, they really needed that. They beat Indiana in Indianapolis in front of about an 80% IU crowd. See, that's what you do, Dan. You stay between him and the bucket. You don't give him angles at all, talking about Sherman. Kraft passed up the corner jumper. Scott will take the three and hit it. Scott has too good a stroke to shoot as poorly as he's been shooting all year at 29%. Back inside to Sherman again. It's really been a focal point of the Notre Dame offense in the early going. Misses on the jump hook. This badly. Again, Williams learned. Don't give him an angle. Make him shoot over you. Here's that zone. And off the fingertips of Williams out of bounds. Shane Scott's a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school, and you see not a lot of respect from Notre Dame, but he has a really nice stroke. He hasn't shot the ball very well at all during his career at Ohio State, but man, oh man, that was pretty good. And he's going to do this now. Knocked away by Scott. They are as good a defensive team as you've seen all season. Right? They're as good a defensive team as you will see yeah. all season. Yeah. I mean, all three of these guys take great pride in Scott, Kraft, and Smith Jr. You know, inside, Williams isn't a great offensive threat, but he'll block a shot. They'll get in passing lanes. They'll help each other. And they play great defense without fouling a lot either. Zach August into the game. This is the elbow jumper. Mike Bray has brought Sherman to the bench as Knight misses. Boy, the big guys for Notre Dame have had so many looks. And nothing is falling right now. Bray probably just wants to settle Sherman down a bit, so he sits him down. August is a key guy for the Irish. Absolutely. Played terrific against Indiana, as did Knight. You know, they had three big guys in that game. Out battle everybody that Indiana threw at them, and that was a real key. And this kid right here, August, was sensational from the foul line area. Sam Thompson into the game, 6'7 junior from Chicago for Ohio State, as uh, good a leaper as you will see in the college game. Connaughton using the August screen misses the three, and the Irish are ice cold early, two for 11 from the floor. Fortunate to be down only four. A very low scoring start, six minutes in. They stay in the zone. The kick back out, Scott. Another one. Scott was on the left side, ran the baseline to the right baseline, came up to the wing. They lost track of him, knocked it in. Trey McDonald off the bench for Ohio State, picks up the assist. Connaughton switches hands and gets the roll. Boy, that was nice because Trey McDonald was there. He was in hell. And Connaughton just made a terrific slide-by move to get a bucket. Isn't it amazing you can watch a guy like that and say this isn't even his best sport, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be drafted and high uh, in baseball this year as a pitcher. Throws in the mid-90s. Notre Dame has a history of two-sport baseball guys. Jeff Smarge yeah. playing with the Cubs. Ross muscles it up and in. I think he's the best natural scorer in the Big Ten. You know, he's six foot eight, six foot nine, long arms, plays with his head up, can shoot the basketball, go on the block, take a couple dribbles. He just, he's one of those guys like Deshaun Thomas that came out of the womb knocking it in. Here's August sizing up McDonald. Now Atkins got the switch and draws the foul. This is what Ohio State does. Very unselfish. They have no problem throwing at each other. And there Scott goes from the baseline to the wing. You know, it's a heck of a move here. You see, William, William, not a Williams, I'm sorry, McDonald was in the lane. He was waiting. But if you're a little bit slow against any of these three perimeter guys from Notre Dame, they can get it in. Grant back into the game after a brief rest. Atkins is on the bench right now as Sherman gets ready to check back in. Grant with a drive and a chance for a three-point play. There's a reason guys are backups. And McDonald's is com coming out of the game and Williams is coming back in. 
The reason McDonald is a backup because he doesn't guard the rim nearly as well. This is the second time you see right here. Little ball screen. Grant just gets lower than McDonald, gets to the rim. That's two times in a row. All McDonald's is asked to do is block shots and protect the paint. Didn't do it. He comes out. Grant misses the free throw. Second foul on McDonald as well. He's back on the bench. Seven and a half in here at Madison Square Garden, Ohio State, Notre Dame. Meeting for just the fourth time in the last 40 years. Scott elevates, but Connaughton down with another rebound. Connaughton's open. was calling for it. Now Sherman with Kraft on him. I'm betting he gets stripped if he moves. <laughs> Connaughton the kick. Grant for three. <laughs> and we've got an Ohio State foul. Kraft was fighting for his life on the block out. <laughs> he is battling. You see he's showing his hands. Sherman kicks it out. Now the rebound foul. And Kraft goes to the bench. Amadeo Della Valle, a sophomore from Italy, is into the game, number 33 for Ohio State, and that's him who comes up with a loose ball. And this is something that Ohio State does. They are the most difficult team in America to inbounds the ball on the side. They underneath the bucket on the side. Like teams have to practice and have two plays to just get the really? ball in. Sherman. And a foul on Della Valle. The Irish can't buy one, but they're still down only five here at the Garden. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by BlackRock. Investing for a new world. Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. And Audi. Truth in engineering. Happy holidays. We bring you the BlackRock Gotham Classic between Ohio State and Notre Dame with the Buckeyes leading by five. 820 into this game. Let's take a look now at tonight's Sonic Showdown for the Irish. It's about shooting. For the Buckeyes, it's about defense. Yeah, the Irish can shoot the basketball from the three-point line. The reason they can is because they move it so well and they spread you out and then they drive. But Ohio State, that three-point defense is no joke. That's because they can get into you. They always, I mean, always communicate. And Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, three teams in the Big Ten that absolutely never foul. Notre Dame so far tonight just four for 14 29 percent from the field 0 for four from three point range all that having been said Mike Bray looks up at the scoreboard they're only down five you might actually feel kind of good about that. Yeah you do and, and Notre Dame's gotten pretty good shots. Yeah. Sherman at the line why has he become so much more than he showed in his first couple of years. I think it's a matter of confidence. I, I think it's like all right I know I'm going to play all the time. And he's playing with veteran guards that really don't have egos, Dan. They, yeah. they don't mind throwing it to him. They don't care. You don't think the beard has mythical powers I or do. mystical powers? I always or, do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, the Red Sox, yeah. it worked for them. And, you know, you've got a goatee, and you certainly have myth <laughs> mystical and mythical and all the other powers. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he came over, joked with you before the game. He, uh, he, he doesn't mind a little bit of good-natured ribbing about it. You know, and that is one of the, as he said, it. It's one of the oddest looking beers yeah. you're going to find. Mark Loving just into the game for Ohio State. Can't finish on the baseline. He's been scoring at a very productive clip off the bench the last three games for the Buckeyes. That's what he is. He's out of a great high school program, Toledo St. John's. Ed Heinzel is one of the outstanding high school coaches in America. Look at that. Boy, Sherman not shy at all tonight, and now he's starting to make them count. Fear to beard. <laughs> but you know, when he goes to his right shoulder, he has great hands. Like he just flips the ball easily left handed. Not a lot of guys can do that. It, a lot of guys get, I can go this way and that's it. He goes both ways and with, with great touch. Amir Williams trying to back down Sherman, left it way short. Now the Irish have a chance to take the lead. Kraft on the bench right now for the Buckeyes, just has one foul. Jackson look at the quickness but good defensive recovery kicks out to Atkins and Notre Dame 0 for 5 from three point range Scott feeling it I was going to say ooh Scott makes that now he's lost his mind I mean that, that, <laughs> that three was for a guy like 
That's a heat check. Huh? Yeah, Good. that's. I, I promised myself I'd never use that word in the broadcast. How come? So I don't know. You don't like it? I don't like <laughs> it. I'm not going to use that big fella or young fella. All right, August the miss. Kraft looking to check back in for Ohio State. Connaughton will check back in for Notre Dame. De La Valle had a good summer, played for Italy in the European Under-20 Championships, and they won it. He averaged 13 points a game. Scott, good ball moving, kick inside, Williams, yes. And you said it, Dan, really good ball movement. And what it did was it forced Notre Dame's guys to worry about their man. Nobody could get in help because of the ball movement, which created a one-on-one -on -one situation for Williams. Snaps a drought of better than three and a half minutes, and now a Notre Dame turnover. Now tomorrow, ESPN and ESPNU feature UConn's women's and men's programs. Number one, UConn right here with the Garden, a part of the Maggie Dixon Classic. You can see them take on Cal at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And then the men's team will take on Washington at 3.30 on ESPNU. Kraft Smith back in for Ohio State. Connaughton back in for the Irish. Kraft the drive. Smith for three. In and out. Smith's been shooting the ball extremely well this year. 47% from beyond the arc. Connaughton. And Notre Dame Man. still can't hit. That was a great play by Grant. He just took the ball to the foul line. Didn't get excited. Found a good shooter. Just happened to miss. They keep getting these shots. Water finds its level. It's going to turn mm -hmm. around a little bit. Or a lot of it. Kraft with a drive and the reverse. That's pretty slick right there. He should be slick. He's been here since like the 80s, Eric Kraft has. He's got a seven-year deal here. What a run he has had. You think of him obviously much more defensively than offensively. Do you know in, in his career, the Buckeyes are 105, no basket foul before the shot, 105 and 19. Uh, Coach Knight said this in the game with Maryland, Ohio State game, and I totally agree. If you're going to ask me to pick one player for this year to start my team with, this is the kid right here. He, he's, you're just going to win. I mean, I, you're going to have leadership. You're going to have enthusiasm, and you're going to have great play on both ends. Timeout on the floor. Aaron Kraft and the Buckeyes up by five. And Ohio State leading Notre Dame by five as we welcome you back to the Garden. Dan Schulman, Dan Dockish, and Jeff Goodman with you tonight. Happy holidays to you and yours as we go under eight minutes to go in the first half. Little zone here from Ohio State. Didn't expect to see this. Jackson passed up the three and instead misses the acrobatic layup attempt. And then a bad pass by Loving turns it right back over to the Irish. Atkins with a 12 footer. Well, Loving, this may be a too big of environment for him. He's he struggled on the offensive, and then he on in the break, he you know, sometimes it, you get the ball in transition, just keep dribbling up the floor, figure it out later. You don't have to make a play every time you get it. Another high ball screen. But Williams is called for the moving screen to take us to a timeout. We'll hear from Aaron Kraft's coach, Thad Mata, talking about him when we come back. He's a winner. He has the ability to affect the game in a lot of different ways, and he's, he's one of the few players I've ever coached that can turn a game around with defense. Berg back with the studio update. North Carolina Davidson went to overtime. Marcus Page, eight points in regulation, had nine in OT, Coach. Without P.J. Harrison, he's playing off the ball, sees a big basket, knocks it down, room and rhythm. Tar Heels survive in advance. Back to Dan Square. York with Ohio State leading Notre Dame is 17 to 14. Aaron Kraft as good a defender as there is in the country. With more, let's go to Jeff Goodman. 
you know, guys, he's as good a defender, and everybody keeps telling him to shoot more. Yet all he wants to do is pass the ball. I talked to him earlier today, and he said as long as his teammates are making shots, he's going to continue to facilitate. He'll probably be more assertive come Big Ten play, but right now he's just worried about winning, and if that means getting his guys the ball, that's all that matters to him. Here's how focused he is on winning. It's his first time ever in New York City from Finley, Ohio. Never been in New York before. Didn't go to Times Square. Didn't do any sightseeing. Didn't walk around. It's business. Here to win a game and go home. Well, Finley, Ohio is a lot like New York City. They're very <laughs> similar, so I don't think he is awed by no. anything. He is. I mean, he's the kind of kid that, you know, you just want your son to be, truthfully. Yep. You want your daughter to date. Oh, he is engaged now, which broke the hearts of many, many <laughs> women in the state of Ohio. Sherman. Go, kill. Now three for seven from the field, but he still has eight of the 14 points that the Irish have. Yeah, struggles going a little right-handed there to his right hand. Much more comfortable going left. Inside, Ross with a mismatch with Atkins, and he'll capitalize. I got to tell you, that is a great play by Ross. I know the mismatch, mismatch, mismatch was there, but you've got two bigs in Knight and Sherman. One of them had to take away that play. That was terrific by Ross, not so good by Notre Dame's bigs. So it's a five-point game. Grant elevates and knocks down the 18-footer. We alluded to it earlier. He's a senior academically. He's a junior athletically. But Notre Dame lists them by their academic year, so they list him as a senior. But he could be back next year. Well, he should come back next year because he, he would be the kind of guy that would make an NBA roster, I think, with another year. And he should come back because what the heck, college is fun. Mm -hmm. Being a basketball player, football player at Notre Dame? Where are you going? Irish in the 2-3, the drive by Smith. And the finish by Williams. Yeah, Williams much more comfortable playing behind his own when there's nobody between him. That's kind of obvious, but if you throw it up to him, he just has a real comfort level going and getting it. When he doesn't have to bounce, it doesn't have to do anything, just catch, finish. Good nice lane. Hey, the coaching staff is going nuts with Ross because when your man sets the back screen, Dan, you are responsible for the basket. And Ross was hugging his man. And I mean, Jeff Bowles got up because he's got the scout and he's hostile. Tom Knight setting the screen. There's a push on Sherman. That'll be his second foul. And we'll see how Mike Bray decides to play this with 5.06 left in the half. He's going to have to come out. He, he can't play in this game with two fouls. And that's a loss for the Irish. So Jackson comes in. Notre Dame gets smaller with Knight, Tom Knight, the, the only real big guy on the floor right now for the Irish. Well, you mentioned that Connaughton plays pretty big. Yep. And Grant, long arm kid. Nice shot fake by Smith. He steps in, misses it. And here comes Connaughton. Stripped. So good. Kraft. That was so good. Dan, I'm telling you, this kid does so many things. Now, this is great to finish. Watch him keep his chin on the rim. You see him, he's still watching the ball. Watch his chin. He keeps it, he keeps it, he keeps it, he keeps it. So many kids drop their head, but on the other end, Kraft put his head under the bucket, forced Connaughton to slow down, and Ross hustled to strip the ball. Great end-to-end -end play defensively by Kraft and Ross, and obviously on the offensive end by Kraft. Kraft is the all-time Ohio State leader in assists and steals. He's got a chance to be the Big Ten's all-time leader in steals by the end of this season. Think about that. Think about a kid who was somewhere in the 100 to 150 range, committed to Bruce Pearl at Tennessee. They had a problem. Next thing you know, Ohio State takes him. Ohio State did not recruit him at first, but Jer uh, Jared Sullinger and the rest of them told yep. Thayad Mata, you got to get this kid. And Dan Sherman's back into the game. Grant with a floater, and Thompson down with a rebound for the Buckeyes. Well, they're going to have to be in a zone here if Sherman's in the game. Kraft again, and called for the carry. Thad Mata talking earlier today about how much he likes 
this group of players how how much fun they have together how much they're willing to learn you don't always hear that may sound obvious but you don't always hear coaches say that about their kids. absolutely yeah. not or if they say it they're lying to you sometimes <laughs> I talked to him on the court before the game that's exactly what he said he's having a blast coaching this group there's no egos they just like each other not afraid to share the ball and just play good ball movement by the Irish and Sherman Misses a chip, he gets it back and lays it in. And Sherman flashed right in front of Ross. And I mean, Thad Mata again is going crazy with Ross. Because he got beat across the lane and then, okay, wasn't tough enough to get Sherman out of there and get the rebound when it was miss came. Look at that. No look, bounce pass behind the back. And it'll wind up with Ohio State getting a trip to the free throw line when we come back. I'm telling you. If I'm picking a player, first guy I'm picking is this. Watch, he gets back to the rim, shows and strips it. I didn't realize he stripped it. He's better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing at the other end as well. Buckeyes by four. Coming up on the K Jewelers Halftime Report, some fantastic finishes today. How Illinois knocked Missouri from the ranks of the unbeaten and some other ranked teams fall as well. Plus, the bowl season kicks off with a thriller in New Mexico. Washington State fumbles away victory in a finish you got to see to believe. Seth Greenberg, you and me, coming up at the half. All right, Steve, thank you. Back here in New York, it's the Irish trailing Ohio State by four. Time to take a look at tonight's Reese's perfect play. Well, the back screen is a difficult play to defend. Let's show you what Notre Dame did and what Ohio State didn't do. I want you to watch number 10 here, LaQuinton Ross. Play's going to develop. There's a back screen. Kraft gets over it. Now, here's another back screen right here. Ross is responsible for the basket, but he doesn't see it. By not seeing it, moving forward, no one's there to help out, and it's a bucket. It's tough to defend, but if you're alert, when you guard the screen or on a back screen, you are responsible for the basket. Should never happen. Connaughton on the receiving end. Sam Thompson is at the line for Ohio State. A trio of Notre Dame players, three of their most important players, Atkins, Grant, Sherman, each playing with two fouls. Amir Williams is on the bench right now for Ohio State. So Ross is the biggest guy they have, and he's given up some size in his matchup with Sherman. Yeah, and he has to be careful what Sherman does if Ross doesn't slide in here and take a charge because they've got him pretty well scouted right now going to his right shoulder. Back into Sherman again. Floater from the baseline in and out. Rebound Kraft. Nice little pass fake there by Scott. Whips a pass inside and Thompson finishes. Dan, you've done a bunch of games. That's the best interior passing I've seen yep. this year. Three times. Grant drives to the bucket. Hey, he just playing harder than what Sam Thompson was. You, know, you never get beat away from the screen. And Grant just crossed him over and went harder than the entire Ohio State defense right there. You really got two unselfish teams here. Two, yeah, it's two. so much fun to it watch, is, right? It is. Zone by the Irish. Somebody's got to get in the middle. And it'll be Ross. Or Smith, rather. Ross draws the foul on the drive. Is that Atkins? It's the third on Eric Atkins. Atkins averages 36 minutes per game, but he's going to have to sit down now for the last two and a half. August back into the game for Notre Dame. Not the deepest roster for Mike Bray. He's comfortable with about eight guys. Yeah, and you know, Atkins has to know better. You're in a zone, so you don't foul. So just show your hands. Don't put an arm bar on anybody. And the ball knows. The ball knew that was a chintzy call. So it doesn't go in. <laughs> the ball oh, knows, huh? Ball knows. So Grant with the ball in his hands. Jackson quiet so far tonight. A freshman, McDonald's All-American from Mishawaka, Indiana. Town next over from South Bend. He's Look at really the spin, good. though. He's yeah, He's really talented. He's got quicks more than your typical Notre Dame guard. And another spin move by Sherman. I'll tell you what, that right shoulder. I'm a little surprised. I know Thad is Thad Mott is upset with his two bigs, but the Quentin Ross hasn't scored enough in this game to overcome his bad defense, yeah. truthfully. Yeah. And Williams only has one foul. It's not like he's got foul trouble. Scott. The rebound August. I think if you Notre Dame, you go right back in. Right back and try to expose Ross again. 
August will drive it. Sherman will miss the follow, and here comes Ohio State. Craft the kick. Wide open. Lenzel Smith. Around and out Ohio State ball with a fresh 35. I don't want to keep belaboring this, but Aaron Kraft is so good. He comes down the floor at his pace, doesn't get excited, has a plan, knows where everybody on the team is. And when he over penetrates a little bit, he gets out of it because he just knows where everybody is. And, and that's such a that's such a valuable tool that point guards sometimes miss. Just know where your teammates are and good things will happen for you. The three for Ross. He's at 42% from beyond the arc. What a talent at 6'8", can shoot it, great athleticism. Last six games, averaging almost 18 points per game. And that's his spot. You cannot let him shoot from the left wing. Maryland did, got whooped. See, but here's the thing with Ross. Ross will go, okay, coach, I gave up two to Sherman, but I scored three. If everybody outscores their man by one, we win. What are you talking about? You got to know where Ross is. A mistake by the freshman here, Demetrius Jackson. Too slow to get there. He has to put the ball down. That is his spot. He loves that left left wing. So here's Grant at the line. Sherman, uh, Mike Bray got him out of there, by the way, with not much time left in the half. Didn't want to risk him picking up his third. And now Jackson will, no, not Jackson, August will come out. And Steve Vasturia makes his first appearance for the Irish, number 32, a freshman out of Medford, New Jersey. So probably got some people here getting a chance to play yeah. on, the, on the floor of the garden. Is it Medford or Medford? Medford. <laughs> Five point game, final minute of the first half. Ohio State unbeaten, ranked third in the nation. Ross driving on Knight. Knight did everything he could, but there's nothing you can do about that. When Sam Thompson wants it, he'll just go higher than anybody else to get it. some trouble but is fouled by Ross but everybody's still buzzing Dan there's some things you just either naturally have or you don't Sam Thompson's got it <laughs> yeah you're not <laughs> you can get to gym all you want yeah. but you're not doing this it's over <laughs> he does that about once a game mm -hmm. you know off an inbounds or transition He's the most electric player in the Big Ten no question probably in the country Second foul on Ross, Knight at the line. And now Grant goes out. He's got two fouls, so Mike Gray doesn't want him to pick up his third. And Austin Burgett is into the game. 6'9 sophomore out of Avon, Indiana. Burgett's a shooter. Knight misses the front end. Boy, Notre Dame has hurt themselves, missing some open looks. Missing the front end of a one and one. They're down seven, and this could be closer than it is as Kraft is fouled and will have a one and one. He just took advantage of the freshman there. Kraft is 37 years old. Demetrius <laughs> Jackson's 18. And he gave him a little head and shoulders, and the rookie kind of went for it. But the rookie's talented. The rookie's going to have his day. Does Kraft have a chance to play at the next level? 100%. 100%. It, look, it. it you know where, like San Antonio, somebody with a great culture. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pacers have a great culture. Someone that, a place that appreciates a guy that just brings it every day and helps you win. Notre Dame, can they get a shot off? Would have counted, but it won't go, and that'll bring the first half to a close here in New York. With the unbeaten and third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes leading 33 to 26 Ohio State over 60 percent in Notre Dame as we mentioned not shooting the ball well at all especially from beyond the arc seven point lead for Ohio State we invite you to come back and join us for the second half here for the garden the first time of the K Jewelers halftime report with Steve Weissman and Seth Greenberg news presented by K Jewelers Tonight's game is a part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic, a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Welcome back to New York City. 
Happy holidays. We've got Ohio State and Notre Dame with the Buckeyes leading the Irish by seven. Ohio State at unbeaten 11 and 0 on the season. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Dan Schulman, Dan Dockage. We talked a lot about Ohio State's defense. It is their strength, but offensively, one of their strengths is they can really spread around the well. Yeah, and they don't mind. It's amazing what can get accomplished when you don't care who gets the credit. And Ohio State could care less who gets the credit. Everybody gets involved in the offense. The ball has been moving. Ross was seven. Great interior passing. I mean, three great. Not good, but great inside passing. This kid right here can score. He can score inside, outside, and tell you something he may not make first team all american aaron Kraft, but he should and sam thompson does that every single <laughs> game it's a fun team to watch it is uh, look at the stats ohio state shooting 50 percent the Irish just 34 percent in the first half and they didn't make a three typically that is one of their strengths for more let's go to jeff goodman trouble with Jeff's mic. We'll get back to him as soon as we can as we are underway. Keep in mind for the Irish, Eric Atkins, one of their key guys, has three fouls and Garrick Sherman and Jeremy Grant both start the second half with two and Mike Bray actually got some minutes out of both of those guys with two fouls. Yeah, and he should. They're veteran guys. You know, I look in the second half right there. Right there has to happen. They've got... They you know, we talked about Danny had good looks from three, didn't make anything. That has to happen for Notre Dame to win a game. Atkins knocks down the three. The Irish's first three of the night, and all of a sudden they're back within four. Here's Kraft. Into Amir Williams. Battle of the big guys, Williams and Sherman. And Sherman wins this one. Sherman with 12 of Notre Dame's points in the first half. Grant, no one to pass to, so he puts up a feathery soft shot to make it a two-point game. I, you know, it's always inexcusable. What goes through the basket? The ball. So always defend the ball. Never leave the ball. Always know where the ball is. So there have been, in your mind, some defensive mistakes from a team known as one of the best defensive teams in the country. Right nice. there was. Scott to Williams. Another inside pass. As good an interior passing from Scott and from Ross, and Williams is the beneficiary. But, yeah, you just don't – you never leave the ball, and that's just communication. I've got the ball. You, know, you get somebody else. When you don't, bad things happen. Man, that was so good by Smith Jr. right there, not letting Grant get it. Connaughton with a drive. Nicely done. Boy, just a curl. And Amir Williams, who's in there to protect the lane, didn't. And Connaughton with great hands. Shannon Scott too strong on the three. Connaughton down with another rebound. Already his sixth of the game. Now Atkins with a burst of speed draws the foul on Shannon Scott and the Irish should come out with some better energy here in the second half. Better energy compared to what they did in the first half and better energy than Ohio State. Let's uh, check in again with Jeff Goodman. Guys, Mike Bray told me that he's going to go more zone, obviously, with that foul trouble to those three guys, three of his starters. And what he needs is his guys to start making shots, especially Pat Connaughton, which we just saw. Thab Mata, believe it or not, despite the fact that they only gave up 26 first half points, he didn't think they communicated well in the defensive end, didn't play as well as he would have liked. But down the stretch, he was happy with the fact that they were much better, much more assertive on the offensive end, got some points going. The Irish have tied it. Thank you, Jeff. Remember, Notre Dame's 8-3. They've lost two home games, Indiana State, North Dakota State. Mike Bray saying if they can get this one, that'll kind of balance the ledger. They got one maybe people didn't expect. They gave up a couple at home people thought they would win. And they lost to good teams. You know, yep. Indiana State's 8-3 and three with a veteran group. Rebound number seven for Connaughton. Notre Dame looking for the lead. Too quick. Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, he's rolling that. a little bit. Yeah. He, he's feeling good. He's a veteran guy. If that was Demetrius Jackson, I'd say yes, but not him. Not that not Atkins or not Grant. Last time it was tied was at 2-2. Two -two. Kraft. And That's, Jackson gets out much quicker there, yeah, right? That, yeah. You have now you make yeah. him do this. All right. But you don't let Ross shoot from the left wing. And 
the foul going against the Irish. Much better job by by Jackson closing out on Ross after Ross hit a three from that spot in the first half. So it makes you crazy as a coach. A lot of things make you nuts as a coach. But you go through a scouting report and it it doesn't get done and then you got to remind and then it does get done. Well, you know, just do it right the first time and works out pretty good. That's what part of being 18 is all about, right? Though, right? You, gotta, right. You, you gotta tell them over and over. Right. Yeah, I always call it body punches. You know, you're not, you're not one time telling somebody is gonna yeah. knock them out, but keep going, keep going. Jackson staying, or uh, Grant's uh, rather staying right with Smith, forced him to give it up. Now Kraft with a shot clock at 10, using the screen, missing the layup. Sherman might have gotten a piece of it. Now numbers for the Irish. Connaughton. Boy, he will not get a better look, and he slapped his hands in disgust on his way back down the court. Now Kraft finds a lane, and the Buckeyes are back on top. Timeout, Ohio State. That Mott is fired up. He is fired up and a little furious about yeah. the defense. His face is Buckeye red <laughs> right now. Aaron Kraft finding a gap. Buckeyes by a deuce. Back of the garden unbeaten Ohio State leading Notre Dame by two. Two more unbeatens in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Iowa State hasn't lost yet. St. Mary's hasn't lost yet. A good tournament from Honolulu. Uh, beginning tomorrow on ESPNU, there are 10 remaining unbeatens. Tell me about Iowa State. I Iowa State, to me, very athletic. Getting them away from home is going to be interesting, but team I like, Dan, is right here. Toledo. Todd Kowalczyk has done an amazing job taking over a complete train wreck of a program and has them playing tough, playing hard, good schedule. Iowa State's pretty good, though. Hilton Coliseum might be the best home court advantage in basketball. Had the big win over Michigan earlier this year. Connaughton, Notre Dame leads. First lead of the game for the Irish. There are more Ohio State fans than Notre Dame fans here in the building, but the Irish fans have had a lot to make some noise about here in the second half. That's the first time Connaughton went straight up in his jump shot. He'd been leaning back a little bit. I'm guessing one of the coaches told him that after the last miss. And Connaughton, good defense. Scott's quick, but he couldn't get by him. Shot clock into single digits. Down to four. Kraft has to do it himself, and he's called for the offensive foul. Oh, man. Kraft can't believe it. Timeout. Notre Dame up by one. Back here in New York, the Irish have taken the lead, and now they've got the ball back after a charge called on Aaron Kraft. Do you like the call? I do. I think anytime you lower his shoulder and the defender, watch, I think he gets squared about right here. Shoulder goes down. You did not like the call. Well, you, and, and you'll, you'll point this out. A defender can be moving. Yes. And it still can be a charge. Yeah, and when right. you put your shoulder down, right. it's like it, it's Christmas for a ref because it makes a block right. charge much easier to call. Or if you extend your arm, it makes a block charge easier to call. So there you had the 18-year-old getting the better with the 37-year-old. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's a really good player, he Demetrius good player. Jackson. Yep. And Kraft is 37. And what a pass. And a hold on the inside, boy. From our angle, it was perfect. That ball was going right in our line of sight. It looked like it went through about three sets of arms on the way to Sherman. Yeah, you're so right. It, let's see here. You got there's one set. There's another set. <laughs> and then the foul inside on Smith. Irish to inbound. They were down seven. Oh, Kraft just <laughs> threw Sherman to the floor. And Scott with a burst of speed. I don't know how that wasn't a foul on Kraft underneath the bucket. But you know what? You're in your 12th year of college. What the heck you get a call or two? And then on the that's, other end. That's one of those loopholes the NCAA's yeah. got to close, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> close that loophole. Yeah. There's no star treatment in college. That's for the NBA. Connaughton needs some help. Find Sherman. He spins the way he wants to spin, but they knew it was coming, and Williams and Kraft double teamed him. Ross, left hand. Wow. Dan, I'm telling you, there is nobody in the Big Ten that can score as easily as he can. He, 
And he was born scoring. Let's go back first and look at this uh, takedown by Aaron Kraft. Did it look worse than it was? Sherman was stumbling back. Kraft pulled him. That's a foul. It is Ross the difference between Ohio State being very good and Ohio State being great. He was a difference last year and then making a run late. He was terrific in the tournament. Absolutely. You know, he can score. He has a scores mentality, but at his length and his size, he needs a rebound. He needs a rebound and get in a stance. If he does that, I think Ohio State's a contender for a national title. Tomorrow you'll get a chance to see UConn's men and women's programs. The number one ranked women's program is here with the Garden to take on Cal at 1 Eastern on ESPN. And then the men's team pays a visit to Washington, 3.30 Eastern on ESPNU. Holiday Hoops presented by Kay Jewelers. I, I know the game wasn't in the Garden, so you didn't do it. You, you're the official now. <laughs> Of the card <laughs> That's here. Right, yeah. But man, UConn women just pounded Duke. Jackson for three. And you said water will find its level. And that level's rising for the Irish beyond the arc. Too many good looks, Dan, in the first half to keep missing. And they got, they've gotten basically yeah. the same looks this half. 0 for 6 from beyond the arc in the first half, 3 for 5 in the second half. Kraft driving again. And a foul call, a late whistle. Looks like Sherman, by the way that he's reacting. It is not. It is Jackson called for the foul. Well, this is a pretty good shot by the freshman. Demetrius Jackson, McDonald's All-American. Really built up his body. Then on the other end, I Kraft just putting his head down and going. And Ohio State back on top as they continue to trade the lead back and forth. So Jackson and Atkins each have three for Notre Dame. Nobody has three for Ohio State. Not a lot out of either bench tonight with the exception of Sam Thompson for Ohio State. Two man game. They don't get anything out of it. Now Sherman at the elbow. He resets. He gets by Williams and he draws the foul on Scott. He does work hard down there. He really does. He flashed across the lane. And, you know, nice try when you go for a steal and don't get it is for teams that go about 6 and 25. It, you only go for the ball if you're 100% sure you can get the ball. And Williams lunged. And he put, was it Scott, in a really tough situation where he had to foul. You just don't lunge. You just... Solid's a pretty good way to play. Yeah, you said just stay between him and the basket and make it hard on That's him. That's it. Yeah. He misses when you do. He makes and puts you in real difficulty when you don't. Missed both free throws. That was a good foul. Good he lunged. <laughs> Sherman 75% on the season from the line. 2 3 zone. Williams off to Ross, lost it. Notre Dame has it. Jackson all by himself. Good decision. Really good. It's amazing if you just don't force things. Oh, that's an yeah, NBA bad. way. That's a bad decision. That yeah. was beyond the NBA line. And not saying he was confused, but every assistant coach on every team comes into this building and says, guys, two lines, blue is ours, white is theirs. Well, what'd you say? 18-year-old, right? Yeah. Great decision five seconds earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then a bad one. <laughs> and that's where the old line, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Right. Yeah, he's going to be a good one. Yes, he is. He's really worked hard. I saw him as eighth grader. Coached against him in AAU and... He's always been a good player, always been a great kid, Demetrius Jackson. Tom Knight's in for him. Jackson's gone to the bench. Irish in the zone again. Thompson. Known more as a, an athlete and a dunker than an outside shooter as he misses that three. Atkins inside to Knight and a foul on Amir Williams. And the Ohio State contingent doesn't like that call. Well, again... You know, Amir Williams slapped down, and when you 
you slap down, you make it easy for the official. Knight with a little roll and a bump. Whether you think it was a foul, you don't think it was a foul. When you slap down, they're going to call a foul. <laughs> Irish are not helping themselves at the line. Now six for 11, Williams to the bench. And Trey McDonald back into the game. Played sparingly in the first half. Trey McDonald's a kid that should have redshirted as a freshman. He didn't get any playing time, didn't want a redshirt. Sat behind Jared Sullinger and didn't get any playing time, but he's a talented kid who came on a little bit a couple games during the Big Ten season last year. Derek Sherman sits down. Zach August back into the game. That free throw by Knight, the first point off the Notre Dame bench in this game. Eight minutes into the second half, and it's a tight one here in New York, and there's an errant pass by Shannon Scott to turn it back over to the Irish. Tenth turnover committed by Ohio State. They're unbeaten, but they're getting a battle here in New York. Back at the Garden with Jeff Goodman, Dan Dockage. I'm Dan Schulman. Ohio State leading Notre Dame by one, but the Irish have taken advantage of a couple of defensive mistakes by the Buckeyes here. Yeah, and this is one of the good defensive team, best defensive teams in the country. I say it all the time, don't lunge. Watch, Sherman across the lane. Williams lunges, and because he lunges, now you have Scott in a really bad position. And you know, if you just play solid, only go for a steal. When you are 100%, you're going to get the steal. Seems simple, but it's timeless. Dick Vermeil said it in the locker room one time. Don't complicate winning. <laughs> Just don't complicate it. August, the handoff to Grant. Bounce pass back to August. Still plenty of time for the Irish. Sherman on the bench right now for the Irish. Amir Williams on the bench for the Buckeyes. Knight will take a long two, too strong, and down with the rebound, LaQuinton Ross. Well, that was a good defensive possession by Ohio State, and they finished it with a block out by Ross. You better get to him. Quick three. Knew he missed it, followed it, and knocks it out of bounds back to Notre Dame. And now Sherman and Jackson both return for the Irish. You know, it's funny. You said he knew he missed it because as soon as he hit the ground, he went running yeah. after those sometimes go in like you're chasing it down it goes in it's the best feeling in the world a look from high up above renovated or remodeled Madison Square Garden they've done a great job here over the last three years have completely transformed the look and feel of this building I miss the tunnel do you yeah. I do yeah. I thought that tunnel was yeah. so cool Connaughton little push off to get free <sighs> And the Irish back on top. Notre Dame switching between man and zone defense in the zone on this trip. Kraft little touch pass off to Scott. Shot, shot, shot. Yeah, other than Kraft, there's no, or excuse me, other than uh, Ross, nobody really that's a shooter. A lot of passes, a lot of touches. It'll be Thompson. Yeah, they could use Lenzel Smith. Hey, no question yeah. about it, in the corner. And, and Or play through the middle. First half, they were able to play through the middle. This is a little step back jack here by Connaughton. Watch this, a little drive, a little pull back. Breaking ankles. Ross got to get a little more solid in this. This is a heck of a move by Connaughton. When I say solid, you know, your feet should never come together defensively. They should always keep a good base and it keeps you on balance. Feet come together, you got a real problem against a good player. We mentioned he's going to get drafted in all likelihood as a baseball player, as a pitcher this summer, but he can go sign with a team, spend part of the summer playing a minor league baseball, and then he can still come back for his senior season of college basketball, and obviously Mike Gray is hoping that that will be the case. Why wouldn't you do that? Yep. I'm a big fan of college. You? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to do it all over again. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Would be dangerous. 
Let's check in with Jeff Goodman. Yeah, Connaughton guys ranked 34th by Baseball America right now among the college eligible players. Massachusetts kid, he's just tough. He's a guy that, like you said, he's probably going to get drafted. He's going to play baseball for a couple months down in rookie ball, then come back, go to Italy for a preseason trip and play his final year at Notre Dame next season. You want baseball scouting report on him? Four seamer, two seamer. Curveball, slider, changeup. Changeup's his best secondary pitch. I asked him if he could hit. He said he gave up hitting for basketball. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, man! He might be able to leap up and smear some line drives way up above the mound. He, he might be. I, a lot of guys in the NBA would not, uh, mm -hmm. that don't play like him. Maybe this isn't his second best <laughs> no sport. Kidding. He's pretty good at this one. And the Irish are surging right now, thanks to Connaughton. Yeah, you got to go back to him. Look what happened. Connaughton's going a little bit, so now Kraft takes him. Grant to Sherman. Running old-style hook. Grant can't finish it. Here come the Buckeyes. This crowd's still buzzing. Notre Dame giving unbeaten Ohio State all they can handle here on a neutral court in New York. Buckeye fans trying to rally their team. Ross. Nifty move to get around Sherman and he draws the foul. Third on Sherman. Is this something we're going to see as a Sports Center top 10 nominee? And it's something that is a smart player nominee. On the double, he just cuts where he's supposed to, front of the rim. And wouldn't that be fun to do? Mm -hmm. I, I would hang for. Oh, you'd get a technical every time. Every, wouldn't you? <laughs> every time. <laughs> Ross is much more like organized on his jump shot than he is on his free throw, kind of all over the ice. Balanced scoring for both teams tonight. It's been extremely close most of the night, especially here in the second half. Atkins needs some help. Eight to shoot. Or two experienced guards making good decisions for Notre Dame. Atkins had it, and Mike Bray wants to go against Ross on the dribble. Ross did a pretty good job, and instead of forcing it, he's got it to his buddy. Well, the Notre Dame bench is alive to everybody standing down at that end of the court right now. And you could look at the Ohio State bench, and nobody's standing. Yep. No field goals for better than six and a half minutes for the Buckeyes. There's nobody in the middle of his zone and nobody can yeah. shoot. Thompson. And Smith fell as the ball winds up being knocked out of bounds to take us to the under eight timeout. The Irish are fired up and it's Pat Connaughton who's firing them up there. Not just a pitcher people. Not just a shooter. That's an athlete. Uh, following the game, it's the Women's Volleyball D1 National Championship, all Big Ten, Penn State, Russ Rose and company against Wisconsin. Russ Rose, he's a John Wooden of women's volleyball. Come John on John Wooden of women's volleyball. 109 straight matches in a row at one point, guys. All right, guys, thank you. What a second half for Notre Dame outscoring Ohio State 22 to 11. The Buckeyes have gone better than seven minutes since they have made a field goal. And the Irish now lead by four. They did not shoot the ball well in the first half. Even though, as you said, they were getting good looks, eventually you had a feeling they would start falling, and they've really done so. You said it, Dan, right from the get-go. Much better energy out of Notre Dame to start the second half. Much better. And basketball, I don't understand this sometimes, because when you play hard, the ball goes in. Now, there's no reason for that other than it just happens in basketball. Harder you play, shots just go in for you. 
Smith with a shot clock running down the miss and Grant secures the rebound Notre Dame shot 34 percent overall in the first half 62 percent in the second half didn't make a three in the first they've already made three here in the second and the zone has caused Ohio State problems they haven't been able to get inside of the zone like they did in the first half and really when you look out there not a lot of shooting for Ohio State Sherman with a floater that was so good that was so good, Dan, because Kraft came over to take a charge. Most big guys would stumble over their size 28s and fall <laughs> down. And he just stopped, popped, and drilled it. 12-3 run, Irish. Sherman now with 14 to lead Notre Dame. Amir Williams leads Ohio State with 11. Very balanced scoring for both teams, but the Irish are on a roll, and as you can see, the Buckeyes are in a deep drought. Well, the Buckeyes have tried. There you go. Just do that. Oh! Good look. Loose ball to Notre Dame. Notre Dame zone on top has been so good at not getting screened. Ohio State has tried over and over and over again to screen the top of the zone, but the veterans of Notre Dame will not allow themselves to be screened, causing Ohio State a huge problem. Boy, closing in on eight minutes without a field goal for the Buckeyes and the Irish, who have trailed most of the night, now up by six. Moving screen, Garrick Sherman, his fourth foul. Well, Mike Gray came awfully close to a technical right there. He walked out with the official. And had the official been a different guy. But Sherman saying, don't sub me out. But Tom Knight's going to come in for him. 50-year senior saying, give me a shot. Mike Bray saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> we'll go in about four and a half minutes. Yep. So Boy, that takes away the inside offense for the Irish. Sherman's been good tonight. Good move. You know, good move by Ohio State getting the shooter in there. But Ross yeah. has his heel out of bounds when he catches the pass. Dan, it's early in the season. I have seen more players not know where they are in the court this year and step out of bounds. I used to say you never saw a good player do that. Like, you never. Have you ever? I mean, never. Does it have to do, again, with the two lines that some kids are out here in a pro arena? Some kids are standing outside the pro three-point line, and they're closer to the sideline. I mean, who knows? I'll make excuses for right. kids and say, yes, it <laughs> <But> is. No. <laughs> no. You know, if, you, know, you know where the sideline is. I think. Atkins with a runner. Man. All Notre Dame here in the garden. <laughs> and a timeout, Fad Mata. Well, he's upset with his defense. Defense got split. And Atkins made him pay, but you've been saying it, Dan. I mean, the offense, there's nothing there. They keep trying to screen that. Definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, expecting a different result. And they, they keep trying to do the same thing. They got to get somebody in the zone, somebody behind it, and play out of it. Capital One Bowl Week continues Monday on ESPN at 2 Eastern. Ohio takes on East Carolina in the Beef O'Brady's Bowl, a game you can also watch live on Watch ESPN. Great finish today in that Colorado State Washington State game. Talking about guys that have been here forever. Mickey Tennelton's son is, remember him as a baseball sure, player? His yeah. son is a quarterback at Ohio. And I'm telling you, he has been in college. I, I think Archie Griffin was <laughs> running back when <laughs> Tennelton's kid was at OU. Boy, when Mickey Tennelton got a hold of one, it went. It right. went. He could hit him a mile. Better than nine minutes. Nine minutes since the Buckeyes have made a field goal. The drought is over. Yeah, they put somebody in the middle, got Williams behind it. A little penetration and get a layup. You always put your big guys behind the zone because it makes the zone flat. You, you got to keep looking behind you to see. You flatten it, opens the middle more. And Mike Bray just sent Garrett Sherman back to check in. Six point lead, Notre Dame. They were down seven at the half. They're looking for a big win after a couple of disappointing home court losses already this season. Ohio State's unbeaten. Off balance by Connaughton. Knight in looking for the rebound, but here come the Buckeyes. Stay in the middle. There you go. Ross turns, puts up the 15-footer. Four-point game. It's good coaching by Thad Mata. He recognized that their setup wasn't getting it done. He put his best player in the middle. Pretty good right there for Ohio State. And now Mike Bray's going to use a timeout. 
What an interesting game. I mean, what it's not going to wind up in the 80s, but you're right. What a fun game. It's, it's great when smart coaches and smart players that just play hard. You know, we're seeing some seniors out here, which is rare, obviously, in college basketball. Ross is getting in the middle of his zone. Uh, throw it to him, turn face, shot, down, opposite is what you do. First look is shot, second look is down as they did it in the previous possession, third look is opposite. Shots there, not good. that's a layup for college basketball players that are any good. So a couple of consecutive baskets by the Buckeyes to make it a four point game. A lot of time left, 4.23 to go. Sherman's coming back in for Notre Dame with four fouls. Sat for a minute and 46. You know, Thad Mata and Mike Krzyzewski are the only two guys that coach multiple national players of the year. David West and uh, Evan Turner. And for Thad Mata, neither guy was a top 100 recruit. Wow. Thad Mata's done a great yeah. job. And you know, Ohio State's the only program in America to go to the Sweet 16 the last four years. Ohio State, let's just keep going with this. Ohio <laughs> State has the longest streak of NBA draft choices at seven. But they're in danger of losing for the first time this year. They're unbeaten at 11 and 0. They're down four. The Irish have the ball. Ohio State has executed much better offensively the last couple of times down against the Notre Dame zone. We'll see if Mike Ray stays in it when the Buckeyes get the ball back. Connaughton against Ross is the matchup that Mike Bray wants. He was trying to get Connaughton the ball to the elbow there. Scott kicked it away. That's the matchup that Mike Bray wants here. Grant defended by Kraft. Swiping at the ball as always. Grant elevates over him and knocks down a highly contested shot. Hey, Kraft was right there. What does Mark Jackson say? Good defense, better offense. Just throw in the middle. Ross in the middle of the zone again. There's the catch. Can't finish. Less than four to go. Notre Dame ball. Now what Kraft has to do now is not let Grant get the ball. He's got to get on top of him. Grant's going. Grant feels it. Grant's competitive kid. Just can't let him get it. Sherman looking to hand off to a guard. Finds Grant. And he turns it over. He thought he got fouled. Kraft driving. Look at the effort on the inside by Della Bolle. He was looking for a foul call, but the Irish come out with the ball. Three minutes to go. Atkins with Ross on him, tries to take him, and he draws the foul and will shoot a couple. It's the matchup he wanted. Whoever Ross is guarding, they're going to attack him off the bounce. The experience of Notre Dame showing through here in the second half. They're up by six late. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by BlackRock. Investing for a new world. Lucas Oil, the world leader of problem-solving additive and high-performance lubricants. And Audi. Back of the garden, the Irish trying to upset the unbeaten Ohio State Buckeyes. One of the issues for Ohio State tonight, Dan, as they are down six with just 2.49 to go. Their leading scorer, Lenzel Smith Jr., doesn't have a single point in this game. Yeah, and hasn't really looked to score a whole lot. He's a driver or a three-point shooter. I mean, the zone has... They've done a good job of locating Lenzel Smith on the baseline. They've done a good job of not getting screen. Talking about Notre Dame here. The leading score doesn't get a point. You got a problem. And a seven point lead for the Irish. Atkins, a 70% free throw shooter. If you're Mike Gray, you got to like the fact you got Atkins and Grant. You're going to get a lot of good decisions, you would figure, with a lead late. No doubt. No doubt, and Connaughton's good with the ball, and Sherman has handled the ball okay. How about Amadeo Della Valle in the game the last few minutes for Ohio State? He is a shooter. Oh, not even way close. strong. Yeah. That Mata said to him, simplify your game. Just put up. We need you to make shots. Good offensive rebound and a put back there by Ross to make it a five-point game. Yeah, I got to believe we're going to have Lenzel Smith in this game before, before long. 
but but they can hide Della Valle in the against him right there against Jackson. The Irish rarely in a hurry, especially now. Connaughton with a baseline drive on Ross, and he's fouled. And or was it out of bounds? Thought I saw a foul signal he there. Yeah, but it's just out of bounds. Notre Dame ball. And this is what they want. They want whoever Ross is guarding. Pretty good play by Ross, reaching across his body. And there's Smith back in the game. Smith in for Ohio State. The shot clock reset, and it should not have. When the official signaled the foul, the, well, the shot clock operator put it back to 35, so they'll sort it out. They've got it back down to eight right now. So it'll be Notre Dame ball, no foul, with eight on the shot clock. The Irish are in the bonus. And figure to be shooting some free throws in the next 202. Be careful here if you're the Irish. I'm telling you. They steal the inbounds pass as the referees continue to make sure they get it right. So again, the issue is to get the shot clock where it should be. And eight is where it should be. So they've got it right. And we're ready to go. What would this mean to the Irish to win this game? It'd be, I watched their North Dakota State game. They get beat, and they got beat pretty much all game. And, you know, now you got to go play Indiana and Indianapolis, come out here. This would be monstrous for Notre Dame. I mean, monstrous. They start ACC play in the new year, their first year in the league, with a home game against Duke. <laughs> How about that? Step back three, shot clock running down. Jaron Grant buries it. Craft is fouled. Hey. Nothing you can do. Look, maybe have your hands up, but when the shot goes up, Ross has his hand up early. Good for Grant. At the other end, fourth foul on Atkins. Grant now with 17, 7 of 11 from the floor. Scott slips, finds Williams, and that's going to be a held ball. The arrow will keep it with the Buckeyes. A lot of pacing and a what lot a of mumbling. Great, great shot. shot. Yeah. You're right. Nothing he could do. Nothing, Nothing else he could do. do. Yeah. Scott. Long rebound to Ross. Right back into traffic. Fouled before the shot. Sixth team foul on Notre Dame. So Ohio State ball. No free throws. Boy, what a thing that has been, huh? Two straight fouls. You've got to keep playing. You don't get the free points. Notre Dame's discipline and zone not fouling has been huge here and, in the last two possessions. And that's it for Eric Atkins. The senior guard has fouled out of the game for Notre Dame. Tom Knight is going to come back in. This changes the whole look for the Irish. Well, what it does is it puts the ball in two people's hands that aren't necessarily used to having it. Connaughton and Demetrius Jackson. Demetrius Jackson, just a freshman. Connaughton more of a three or four man. Ohio State, one of the last remaining unbeatens, one of ten remaining unbeatens in the country. We've got the Diamond Head Classic for you coming up on ESPNU, which features a couple of unbeatens, including St. Mary's and Iowa State. You'll see that over the weekend. Here's Kraft stumbling, finds it, kicks it. Ross, wide right. Knight, good job in traffic to come up with that rebound. And that's why Mike Gray put him in. He put him in because he knows he needed one rebound. Steal. Nearly. Ross tapped it. Couldn't get it. And Mike Bray wants everybody to take a deep breath. He'll use a timeout with a minute 15 to go. Smart. There may be no coach in America calmer in timeouts in these kinds of moments than Mike Bray. Well, you had him in the, what, the five-over? Five-over time game against Louisville. 
He was having more fun than he anybody. Was. He Every time they called a timeout or at the end of every overtime, he said to his players, isn't this great, guys? Aren't we all having so much fun? <laughs> and, Rick, and Russ Smith was making Rick Pitino crazy. <laughs> Here's the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. The games begin on Sunday on ESPNU, and as we mentioned, Iowa State and St. Mary's, two of the remaining unbeatens, as are the Ohio State Buckeyes, but they're up against it right now, down eight with just a minute 15 to go. They have had a knack of knocking off highly ranked teams over the years. Oh, yeah. I mean, the highlighter is 88 uh -huh. game winning streak. That's right. The white clay from the right yeah. corner. That's got 40th anniversaries coming up. Digger will be inducted into the Notre Dame Ring of Honor on the 40th anniversary of that win over UCLA back in 74. It's January the 19th, I believe, when they play Virginia Tech. And Grant got caught in the air. And he makes a mistake, turns it over, gives it back to Ohio State, less than a minute to go. You, you can get and take a quick three here, but if you miss, the game is over. You got to get point, two point, one point, doesn't matter. So take the ball to the rim, figure it out. Ross taking it inside, yeah. knocks it down, six point game. Clock stops on a make. Get your trap right here, a foul. Foul the freshman. But even yeah. better. Smith, four point game. First points of the night for Smith. Got it again. And another steal. No basket, but a foul as the Ohio State pressure completely rattling the Irish here on three consecutive possessions. Dan, that's what we said. You've got guys that aren't used to handling the ball once Atkins fouled out. Look, Demetrius Jackson, he's just a freshman. He's never seen this kind of heat before. <laughs> you said it when, the, when Atkins fouled out. Now you've got... And you've got, excuse me, Grant, who, that's two turnovers for him, both jumping in the air. Yep. That's inexcusable for a veteran player. He's played too well in the second half to make two plays like that. So Notre Dame uses its last time out. Free throws coming for the Buckeyes. You said 15 seconds ago. They miss, it's over. Make, steal, make, yeah. steal. Brand new ball game. That's why you see people take these quick threes. You can't. You just get points and let... Let the other teams mess it up and trap them, do your thing, but they'll they'll give you a chance most times. Let's go back to the studio, get a quick update with Steve Weissman. All right, thank you, Dan. What a finish there. Coming up next, Deja McClendon, Penn State looking for their sixth national title in women's volleyball. Taking on Wisconsin, they swept the Buckeyes during the regular season. About 10 minutes away from starting that national championship going to be crowned. Back to the finish at MSG. All right, Steve, thank you. Dan, you're, you're Notre Dame. Well, uh, Ohio State's at the line right now, but when Notre Dame gets the ball back, what do they have to do differently? Well, they, they, truthfully, where they got the ball was fine, but they have to fake before they dribble. Like, they've dribbled and then gotten in the trap, and then it turned it over. Here's the big question. It's for Thad Motti. You've just turned them over a couple times. You make these free throws. It's a two-point game, 41 seconds to go. Do you keep the press on and risk a foul? Now, if I'm Thad, I don't think I would, but I would pick up full court with the three guys, uh, Scott, Smith, and uh, Kraft, and see if we can get a cheap turnover. Shannon Scott at the line, a 58% free throw shooter on the season, has not been to the line tonight. One and one. Remember, Notre Dame is out of timeouts. Two-point game, just like that. Mike Bray wants to make a substitution. Tom Knight is coming out of the game. And Steve Vasturi is back in. Played just a few seconds in the first half. The shooter, I'll tell you this, he touches the ball. I'm following. This is the garden. This is loud. Into Jackson, and they foul him right away. 
The admon, reason he fouled right away, even though there was a five or six second difference in the clock, reason he fouled is he knows his team's got it rolling right now, so let's make this game as long as yep. we can. 6-0 run in 11 seconds. Jackson's a freshman. 74% free throw shooter on the season. One and one for him. Vasturia out, night back in. This is this is pressure for a freshman. That's pretty good right good there. Huh? <laughs> yep, no doubt about yeah. it. Now again, you take it to the rim, you don't need anything quick, crazy. Craft the kick. Smith <laughs> is fouled, fouled on a three. Oh. Shot fake. Got a defender in the air. I thought he might jump in right here. Connaughton. And then here With comes the Jonathan yeah. Bag. Yeah. Mm. Veteran guys making big mistakes late for Notre Dame. night in comes Vasturia when Atkins fouled out with a minute 31 to go the Irish led by eight it's a free throw away from being one timeout Ohio State Denzel Smith Jr. has one of the great shot fakes in college basketball. Look at the ball go up. Connaughton, oh man. He, there's, there's no real way to analyze that other than that old coaching axiom. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Never foul a jump shooter. No. Yeah. And like you said, experienced guy. Well, we've had yep. Grant turned it over in half court, yep. jumping up in the air. Yep. Then we had Jackson, who's a freshman. He turns it over in front of, you know, kind of in no man's land over here. Then Grant, who's a veteran guy, jumping up in the air in the backcourt, turns it over. And then Connaughton, who's an experienced guy, fouls for a three. Now Very they got to get it in and not turn it over. I'm telling you, Ohio State, watch, watch Kraft right now with Jackson, or with Grant, excuse me. Last time, he had Grant cutting all over the place, couldn't get his feet. Well, I'm fouling right now. So Steve Vasturia, who is in the game because Atkins is fouled out and they wanted another guy who could handle and who could shoot, comes in. He's a freshman, as we mentioned. He has a grand total of zero free throw attempts this season. And it's one and one. Bet you he didn't think he'd be doing this right about now, a few hours ago. Will they use the last timeout or will he let him play? Middle of the zone. And probably the Buckeyes with a chance to win this game. They've got the lead. No timeouts for the Irish. Grant, Ohio State ball. Now Notre Dame's got a foul. Bad model will use his last timeout. You want to know why I picked this kid first? Of all the kids in the country, I pick Aaron Kraft first for this year, not for the future. Look at this. Put your head down. 
Don't tra don't charge. Make a play for your teammate. And now on the other end. Oh man, look at this. Move your feet. Move your feet. Strip off of Grant. Didn't have a great game. But who made the plays late? Mm -hmm. The first, I'm telling this kid's a first team All-American, should be on the wooden watch list. First guy I would take in college basketball would be that kid right there and go play us. It's an 11 to 2 run for Ohio State in about a minute and a half. And all of a sudden they've got the ball. In the, what happened? <laughs> what happened was a short bench. Atkins goes out. Yep. And Ohio State, because they have veteran guys, Smith Jr., veteran guy, Thompson, veteran guy, Aaron Crabb, Scott, because they have veterans, they knew not to panic, pick up the pressure. Next thing you know, they're in the lead. You know, one other thing, the cut by Lenzel Smith along the baseline yes. on the drive by Crabb shouldn't be forgotten. He got himself in a position to get open and make With a layup. The, and too, so, so many guys want to yeah. stand around yeah. when the heat's on. Yeah. Two things happen when the heat's on during the game. Kids get quiet and kids stand. Kraft kept the energy going and Smith made a great cut. You're right. And Jaron Grant's had a, a tough last couple of minutes. Really yeah. tough. Yeah. A very good player who's had a, a tough last couple of minutes and now Notre Dame's in a desperate situation. Ohio State may remain among the ranks of the unbeaten. They've got Knight at 6-10 on the ball to try to bother Kraft. Yeah, and Kraft cannot move. And he was a high school quarterback and a pretty good one. And a quick foul. It'll be Smith going to the line. Smith is a good free throw shooter. 78% on the season and perfect tonight. Smith is one of the coolest, calmest guys you'll ever see. Volleyball coming your way next. Even if Smith makes both, and this is one and one, even if he makes both, a three can tie it. No timeouts for either team. Vasturia just came back into the game for the Irish. Smith didn't score for the first 39 minutes and 15 <laughs> seconds, and he's got seven. Remember, he made the three free throws after Connaughton fouled him. I'm telling you, that kid is, he's a mature guy. Came, not really highly regarded. He's played great for Ohio State. They need a three to tie it. And a foul committed by Kraft. Kraft's pointing at Sherman, but it's Kraft called for the foul. That's the tenth team foul on Ohio State, so two free throws coming. I thought this was a foul on Kraft. I thought Sherman was there. He is. And you know, yep. Ohio State fans don't like it, but oh, that's a foul on Aaron Kraft. So two for Jaron Grant. Now, what you have to do here. Boy, he was not very confident right there. He, as soon as he shot it, he ran after it. Notre Dame is in the top 10 in the country in free throw shooting. They've made 10 out of 18 tonight. 56%. They have made mistakes. Turnovers, free throws. And now here comes V.J. Beecham into the game on the defensive end. If they don't get a quick steal, they need an immediate foul and hope for a miss. I kind of think Grant was trying to miss that free throw, the second one. And what I was going to say is what you have to do is you got to make sure you block out Sherman. Precious seconds ticking away. And finally the foul as about three and a half seconds came off the clock. Wow. And it'll be Kraft going to the line. That's the tenth on the Irish. So it's two free throws for Kraft. And he can salt it away. What a crazy finish. What a heartbreaking defeat this would be for Notre Dame. This is absolutely crushing for Notre Dame. You're 58 seconds, eight point lead. Kraft. A bit of a bloody nose. They're checking to see if it's under control enough for him to to play on, and it is. Two free throws.
to tie it. Ooh. Not a bad look for Jackson, but he can't hit it. And Ohio State remains unbeaten as they go to 12 and 0, and the Irish suffer a heartbreaker as they drop to 8 and 4. It was 58-50 Notre Dame with a minute and a half to go and Ohio State outscores them 14 to 3 the rest of the way. Man, that kid right there and those two kids right there. Aaron Kraft's our guy player of the game. Lenzel Smith Jr. Terrific down the stretch. They picked up the heat Ohio State did and Notre Dame could not handle it. Tonight's player of the game brought to you by Lucas Oil is Aaron Kraft had uh, the great pass then the great steal made some big plays late and helped will Ohio State to a victory when all appeared to be lost for the Buckeyes not a bad look for the Irish all things considered well, a really good look Demetrius Jackson just a little bit long but what a game wow. man all kinds of fun happy holidays to you and yours as Ohio State rallies and it beats Notre Dame 64 to 61 they remain unbeaten at 12 and 0 on the season coming up next year on ESPN 2 NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship Wisconsin and Penn State for Dan Dockett Jeff Goodman and our entire ESPN crew I'm Dan Shulman saying thanks for watching and